Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Only Plants potting mix. And these are the five potting mix that I've designed and they have fit every species imaginable, maybe except air plants, which don't need any potting mix. I'm gonna go through with you each of these mix and each of these individual ingredients and why we select them and the process that we make them in case you wanna replicate this in your own home or in your own countries because some of these materials may not be available where you are, but the theory is very similar because again, these all address different types of uh, species, different families of plants, different growth habits. So yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna get started, starting with this one right here. All right, so I'm actually much more comfortable doing close-ups. I don't like you guys staring at my face for too long, but I'm gonna answer a lot of frequently asked questions along the way. I'm gonna be kind of all over the place, but I guess the first question is do we export and we don't because these are all organic material we cannot ship. This is why a lot of the plants that are shipped by phytosanitary certification are shipped without the potting mix, they're bare root. So yeah, we can't ship these out and this is available on sale, but you're more than welcome to mix your own. And yeah, I'm gonna get started. This is a general purpose potting mix. And this is made of cocoa peat, perlite, burnt rice hull, and some worm casting. Cocoa peat is added to retain some moisture in there. It contains no nutrients and it is also very sustainable. This is why we use them. And then the little white flecks you see here is my perlite. And we chose a tiny little perlite for this general purpose potting mix. And the only reason they are here is to give this plant, uh, this potting mix drainage and gives it a bit of airy property, lets it dry out a little bit faster, lets the root breathe. And then next we have this burnt rice hull here. I don't know if you can see this tiny little black thing. They're basically rice husks that are burnt or charred rather, and they contain a little bit of silicone. But most importantly, they have very, very strong antimicrobial properties, which kind of helps prevent uh, root rot, not prevent entirely, but it reduces incidence of root rot and uh, bacteria and fungi. So it creates a very good uh, antimicrobial property in the potting mix. And then finally, we can't see it in here, but there is actually worm casting, which is actually worm poop. So this is a composted uh, material that the worms are feeding on. And basically this is the poop that they have um, worm casting, so they are mixed in here. So they provide nutrients for the potting mix. So this already has a little bit of nutrients, but then you probably should also fertilize with slow release fertilizer or top it up with a little bit of worm casting every six months or so because nutrients do get used up over time. And by the way, all the information is up on our Instagram, which is gonna be up above here. It's a at onlyplants.pottingmix. So it is a new Instagram account, but all of these are pinned in the Instagram highlights. Um, so you can feel free to look through them. And I think that worth mentioning is uh, for general purpose potting mix, they're suitable for every plant imaginable. You can plant cacti in here for sure, but you don't want to water it. Maybe you want to water it once a month or so. So aeroids and everything can literally live in this general purpose potting mix. This is why we call it general purpose. However, we do recommend it specifically for some species. For example, your peace lilies, your syngoniums, skin dapsis, your caladiums would love it here, but caladiums do like it a little bit more wet, so you want to water it a little bit more and they like full sun. But anyways, you watch my caladium videos for that. This is potting mix video. So ficus would really love it here. Some ferns would love it here. Pothos, your coleus, peperomia, and so on and so forth. So this is a very good uh, beginner's potting mix if you're not sure. This is also a little bit better than the potting mix. I don't want to say better, I don't want to sound too arrogant, but this is really well balanced in terms of drainage, in terms of water retention, nutrients, and just antimicrobial properties. This is also very good for propagating. So I propagate a lot of plants directly into here. I just stick notes right in here, whether it's pothos or anything. So yeah. That's all. I want to go really fast because I don't want to spend too much time in this video, too much details. It'll bore you guys to death. But if you want to know more, feel free to DM me either at botanist, my uh, plant account, or at potting mix, uh, and only plants potting mix account. Someone will get back to you for sure. This right here, this is actually our best seller. This is the Aeroid potting mix. It's made of coconut chips. Uh, this is actually horticultural, horticultural <laughs> charcoal here. And uh, Backstory of, of this, this is actually cut, uh, they come in bigger chunks, but we do have to break them out so that they're exactly like this size. So they're the perfect size, they're similar size to the cocoa chips here. Very difficult to achieve. I thank my business partner Jeff for, for really, really uh, achieving this and of course his staff. Because when you're trying to break this apart, you need like a hammer and a chisel. And 
that place is going to be full of dust. You need a face mask to work on this. And then the face mask will be black by the end of the day. So this is something that not many people can achieve. And also with a lot of, a lot of our cocoa, peat and coconut chips products, they have been treated. So there's no tannin left in there. Tannin is actually acidic. It will harm the plant. So these guys have been treated. We do get them from reputable producers and they're also very sustainable. Okay, so back to the mix. There's uh, some dry twigs in here, as you can see. And they basically help kind of tent uh, create tented area in there to cr allow air to move around a little bit. They also do break down over time to uh, give you a little bit of organic material. And then in here we have the perlite as before. We also have the burn rice hull. Our burn rice hull is actually used in every potting mix here because of the, again, their antimicrobial properties. They're very, very airy. They're very lo loose. And then they, they just cre create a lot of good air movement around the plant. They're very, they're not, they're not gonna let your media get too compacted. So we like that. And then I think we have some worm casting in here as well. So this is uh, also a little bit new, uh, fertilized. But again, do add your own fertilizing, slow release fertilizer of your choice. And every few months you can top it up, uh, just top dress it with like, I don't know, just a, a natural fertilizer of your choice or just chemical fertilizer of your choice. But just to let you know, you do need to top this up, but this came loaded with a little bit of nutrients. And this is particularly good for uh, epiphytes, actually. I know we call it an aeroid potting mix, but it's actually an epiphytic potting mix. This means that a lot of the other species are going to survive here, such as the Hoyas, the Shkidias, your bromeliads are going to love it. Your jungle cacti is going to love it. But of course, uh, we want to talk about your aeroids. You know, you're talking about anthuriums. For anthuriums, you do want to top dress this with a little bit of sphagnum moss just to seal in the humidity a little bit more in here. And then you have your philodendron, monsteras, epipremnums, refidophoras that will love it here. And let me quickly talk, walk through the science. I know that we've gone through this in the channel many times before, but when you have chunky potting mix like this, you're less likely to overwater the plant because this dries up super fast. Especially if you pair this with terracotta pot, you may have to water the plant every day, which is good. They actually love that wet and then very quickly drying up periods. So this prevents over, uh, over watering, but the best thing about it is uh, there are actually many types of roots that a plant can put out, especially epiphytic plants. They can put out water roots when you water propagate them, or when you grow them in this mushy uh, potting mix, they can survive, but then they will start putting out pretty mushy roots that are just yeah. But then when you uh, give them a very chunky potting mix, like very grippy, they will put out these really thick, grippy, grabby uh, uh, aerial roots that will turn into roots. And because this of the chunkiness, they actually are fooled into thinking that they are climbing. And here's the thing with epiphytic plants, when they think that they're climbing, when you fool them into that, um, they will produce magnificent leaves. They'll produce this more fenestrated leaves and bigger leaves. They'll just invest their energy because they think, hey, you know, fellas, we're, we're doing well. We're, you know, we're gripping onto something. So this is my trick with aerites, how to get bigger leaves fast and how to not overwater them and just let them thrive. So this is my go-to mix or bestseller. I propagate a lot of plants directly into this. Uh, watch my propagation video if, in case you haven't because it's quite useful. I, I show this potting mix all the time. And with this actually sometimes uh, because I, I was like mixing around while filming, the looser sediments tend to sink down to the bottom, but normally they don't do that. So don't mix it. Just kind of leave it alone and yeah. And if you get this in a bag, you definitely want to kind of go through the bag. Just make sure that the finer particles are being dug up. And yeah, and just don't mix it around. Uh, <laughs> Next up, this is actually my favorite potting mix. Believe it or not, this is called the forest floor potting mix. And this replicates the forest floors um, in which the plants, most of our plants come from actually. But this uh, is made of dried bamboo here. Uh, it's bamboo. I don't know what part of bamboo. It's not the leaves. It's probably the bark because they're so fine. It's very sustainable. We've got perlite. We've got dried twigs again. It will keep a lot of airflow for going there. It creates a tenting type uh, property here. And I got, of course, we have the burnt rice hull again, worm casting. And here we actually have some horticultural charcoal as well. And this is also to just add a lot of airiness because in nature, like nothing is Exactly. This. this is like a very inconsistent mix. If you know what I mean, it's very, very irregular. Unlike this one here, like this is very regular, predictable. So the roots really have to wiggle their way around. So these are for plants that really love humidity. But in my high humidity climate in Indonesia, 
a lot of plants can rot in here just so you know i know that overseas maybe this may not be a good mix for you but in here for example calatheas and begonias my gosh they will rot like crazy if you give them this kind of potting it's too compact too dense too wet for too long so this will actually dry them out very very quickly i actually do water my begonias and calatheas and, and pretty much all the plants in this potting mix every day sometimes even twice a day if it's like super hot out and if the plant is maybe more mature it has a more root system but yeah this in this potting mix the roots are never kind of left to dry out for too long if you water them frequently enough um, but then they, it's never ever compacted look at that it's never compacted i also do propagate a lot of plants directly in here we please watch my calathea aglonema and begonia videos for propagations because this is what i use um, if you live overseas and you don't have access to all these exotic um, what do you call it, ingredients just use this um, this is my general purpose potting mix just use half cocoa peat and just half perlite because that will create a very similar uh, potting where it's just very airy, it doesn't hold on to the moisture for too long. And this potting mix is very beneficial for your begonias, calatheas, marantas, and aglonemas. My god, they love these. And different bakias, apischias, you know, pipers, ooh, and very important, alocasias. I know in my previous video I mentioned that alocasias are aeroids, and that's why they should be an aeroid potting mix. I was wrong. That was probably about a year ago. I apologize for that and I own up to my mistakes. Alocasias really thrive in the forest floor potting mix and they will put out these corms and these babies easily in this because it's so airy. And in nature, alocasias actually live on the forest floor. So basically, if you look at a plant that is grown on a forest floor and they like humidity, but not getting uh, too wet too compact in this health mix this is your go-to material and you do want to water this a bit more frequently than your other potting mix that we showed here today so yeah alocasias love love this potting mix and alocasias uh, really quick they actually like a lot more sun than we give them they like it brighter and they like it a little bit more moist than your uh, other aeroids so water this often if you put your alocasias in them but they really really thrive in these Next up, this is the cacti and succulent potting mix. This is our new baby. We love it. I've been using this for a long time. Although I must be brutally honest with you, none of my cacti and succulents survive. Well, maybe 10% of it. That's because I'm an overwaterer and also it rains every day here. And I'm just terrible at cacti and succulent, you guys. But, you know, I studied a lot of theories about, you know, where they come from, the kind of media that they like. And actually, this has helped whatever remaining succ succulent and cacti that I have to survive. Because again, I'm a hopeless overwaterer. I do water all my plants every day, cacti or not. Do not follow me. But this is a very, very good potting mix for them. I, it's made out of akadama here, which is uh, used mostly in bonsai. It's mostly very like uh, rocky, sandy type mix here. This is perlite. And we've got a little bit of vermiculite in here. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. So we added vermiculite to give it some visual interest. They're only here because they, well, they, first of all, they're actually quite airy. They retain a little bit more moisture than your perlite. Um, they're very similar. It contains no nutrients. But look at how beautiful they look. Because cacti and succulents, they're such slow-growing plants. We do want our potting mix to look good so that the plants look better in them and so that we are happier. And then, of course, the black stuff you see here, this is the burnt rice hull, which is on every potting mix but again we use them because they actually do help prevent or reduce the incidence of root rot and they're very fast draining airy and they're just quite interesting visually no and then finally we also have a little bit of worm casting here although we did add less worm casting than we did with all the other potting mix there because your cacti and succulent they don't like as much fertilizing and they can rot very easily if you give them too much nutrients. So this actually looks really, really good with a uh, terracotta pot, just so you know. I know this is shown in plastic pot, but imagine a terracotta pot with this. So this is good for your cacti, for your succulents, and some desert plants like your Tratus cantia, Silla montana. I don't know why I thought of that, but that's the first plant that came in mind because it's a beautiful Tradescantia that grows in the desert. Your adeniums, your zamias, the zizi plants, I mean your cycads, sansevierias, aloe veras or aloe species, and even your bonsai, they all will thrive in this. So all of the species that I mentioned above will be watered differently depending on their species and your lighting condition and all that good stuff. But this is the perfect mix for them. Uh, if you don't have you know, the exact type of mix here, 
just use your, you know, whatever you have. You can use pumice, you can use akadama, you can use sand. But the idea is you want it to be super fast drying. This will dry out really, really quickly. And it's also got this really rocky type uh, surface here because all their roots are used to uh, this kind of grip in nature. You don't want to grow them in this. They can actually, uh, you can actually grow them in this. They will do okay for the most part. But look at how mushy it is. It's a very mushy. Uh, potting mix. They won't anchor themselves that well. So yeah, this will be the right plan for them. Imagine an adenium where it can get a little bit top heavy. They do need something like this to to be happy in. Last but not least, this is our new baby <laughs> again. So the last two potting mix that we showed here, these are both new to the family. And this is actually the garden potting mix. And this is actually made out of uh, cocoa peat is heavily cocoa peat because it's very sustainable and it retains a lot of moisture. So this is actually for very, very moisture loving plants, by the way. There's some neem cake here, surprisingly. Neem cake actually is made of the byproduct of neem leaves. So over time, they do break down and release some of that properties that is antifungal and, anti and pesticidal properties uh, over time to the plant. And also they are a mild fertilizer. So very premium stuff, neem cake. Not many people use it in their potting mix. And then you have perlite here, burnt rice hull, and then we actually do use compost in here. So this is a very, very nutrient dense potting mix compared to the other ones over there. You do want to, uh, depending on the species, you do want to feed them a little bit more than usual because this is actually designed for plants that love a lot of water. And usually those plants require a lot of light and require a lot of energy and a lot of nutrients as a rule of thumb. For example, any fruits, fruiting type plants, your vegetables, your herbs would really love this. But keep in mind, you do need to give them very good light. If you don't have good light for your herbs, you may want to use something. You, may, you can actually mix these two up. By the way, all of these potting mix, you can mix them up. You can. You can play around with them depending on how frequently you want to water them, the species, how you want to experiment because I do that all the time, uh, just so you know. Uh, but again, this is very dense. This is nutrient uh, heavy. Again, it's for flowering plants too. A lot of flowering type plants, they require a, a, like to con stay constantly, not constantly, but they want to stay moist longer. But keep in mind, most of these plants are probably full sun loving plants or direct sunlight loving plants. This is also very good for colocasias, you guys. That's a species that I'm really into these days. And uh, this will stay a little bit wet longer. So these moisture loving plants will love it. And also ferns, you guys. Ferns would really love this potting mix. And by the way, this is made with neem cake. So then it's actually a little bit pesticidal, which is going to be good for your food crops because you don't want to be using chemical for, uh, pesticide. So this is already fertilized and this already has mild pesticides. Feel free to top this up with neem cake. You know, you can purchase more and just sprinkle them on top of the potting mix every three months or so. And the plants will hopefully be a little bit more pest free because we know that these plants are usually very pest prone. Just so you know, fruiting, vegetables, flowering, herbs, they're all uh, pest magnets. Well, maybe not herbs as much, but they are herb mag uh, they're pest magnets because they create so much energy, so much sugar, so much essential oils that a lot of uh, uh, pests, they do thrive in them. So this already has some pesticidal properties to them. So you can proudly say that your, uh, you know, crop vegetables, fruits, whatever, or herbs are grown organically because again, no chemicals in here. So I guess this is it for everybody. I don't know what else I'm missing out. But again, I want to mention that you can actually mix and match some of these. When I have some aeroid that actually are a little bit more moisture loving, I go ahead and put some more general purpose potting mix in here just to let it uh, retain a little bit more moisture. Again, with anthuriums, I want to stress it. They love the aeroid potting mix with sphagnum moss top dress on top. This is most of the anthuriums. They love that humidity around them. Oh, by the way, I really want to quickly address this as well. This looks very similar. This is the general purpose potting mix. This is the garden potting mix. They're actually quite different. The general purpose potting mix has a lot more drainage to it. It has less uh, nutrients in it, which means that it won't uh, rot a lot of our house plants. We don't, which don't need that much nutrients. So this is a, a little bit uh, more fast drying than this one. So this really is uh, for plants that really want to hold on to moisture longer. And as a rule of thumb, usually this will be outdoors. You don't really want to use garden potting mix indoors because it will dry out for way too long. Uh, it, it'll take too long to dry out. And again, you can kind of 
you know, interchanging in a way, for example, like if you have a ficus plant, so they can actually live in both of these. But again, with this one, you do want to water it a lot less frequently than this one. So yeah, amazingly, plants can adapt to many conditions. If you mix them in the wrong potting, sometimes they can still live. Sometimes they may thrive. I don't know. Um, it all depends on how the cutting was grown, propagated, how you water it and all that stuff. Plants are actually quite resilient. They're adaptable. And if you have bought a plant and it looks happy in its original nursery potting mix, don't be in a rush to repot it. Seriously, I don't do that. If a plant is happy, don't repot it. But if a plant looks you know, terrible or sad, or if you want to propagate plants, go ahead and give them a change. I propagate my plants in all of these potting mix. Just stick the cutting right in here and they thrive and they love it. So feel free to contact me on Instagram if you have any questions about these or if you have any questions about mixing your own potting mix. They are very important, you guys. Potting mix, I would say, is the third most important factor. Number one would be definitely your sunlight. Number two would be your watering. Your third would be your potting mix. This is basically the canvas for which that artist would paint onto. You need a good canvas to have a good work of art, I guess, right? <laughs> and I also want to put a disclaimer out there that there are many potting mix makers out there and Everybody swears by their own recipe as I do mine, and there's no right or wrong out there. Um, so experiment, you know, if you're making your own potting mix, go to town and, you know, be open-minded. I'm always open-minded too. Me and Jeff, which I really want to thank him so much for making all this happen. We developed the samples together. We created production for these. We designed the packaging and we've been shipping to many people and with a lot of really good results. I want to really thank him. But, you know, the thing about me and Jeff, why we were we get along so well is because we're always reinventing. We actually tweaked these formulas right, uh, you know, last month. And then we're going to continue to listen to you guys and we're going to continue to tweak them over the years to make them, you know, better. So I want to put a disclaimer. This is not the perfect potting mix. It is what we know right now that is amazing for different types of uh, species. You don't really need anything outside of these selections, but we are also constantly evolving and listening to science and listening to your feedbacks. So if you have purchased one of these, do uh, give a comment to us. Let us know if there's anything we can do better in the future, but we are very happy with this now. Our plants are thriving, yo. <laughs> well, I want to make it clear uh, that these bins behind me, this is where I normally film. This is also where I, I work and propagate plants. These four bins, these are the potting mixes actually, so I do use them. And just so you know, I actually do buy them from myself because the potting mix is a separate business entity with, for me and Jeff. So yeah, I buy them actually at full price. So do not ask us for discount because even I buy them at full price. But of course, I do get the profit sharing and all that good stuff. But yeah, I actually do use this potting mix by myself and have proven to be really, really good for my plants. And I hope that they work really well on yours as well. We have been getting inquiries about private labeling for potting mix and distribution. And we are very open-minded to it, just so you know. If you have a this business and you want to distribute our potting mix, we'll be happy to give you a distributor's price for it. If you have landscaping project, we do have a special price. Or if you're a nursery and that you want in Indonesia and you want to use our potting mix, we do have a business-to-business -business, uh, corporation. So feel free to reach out to one of us. We're very open-minded to work with you guys um, on this potting mix but we are always striving to provide really really good value we don't want things to be too expensive feel free to contact us reach out to us and i guess i will see you in the next video bye